All right. Good afternoon. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Cuyahoga County Council regular meeting for Tuesday, March the 24th, 2005. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Calling the roll, Mr. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Schron? Here. Ms. Conwell? Here. Mr. Jones? Here. Ms. Brown? Here. Mr. Hairston? Here. Ms. Simon? Here. Mr. Greenspan? Here. Mr. Miller? Here. Mr. Germana? Here. And President Brady? Here. There is a quorum. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Silent meditation this evening. I learned uh, just uh, a couple of hours ago that um, uh, Dave Rutt, who is a retired Cleveland police officer and uh, runs the county Crime Stoppers program, uh, was uh, unfortunately uh, died in a tragic accident today. So I'd like to keep him as part of our family in mind. Okay. Is there any uh, public comment related to the agenda? Uh, there is no public comment related to the agenda. Thank you. I'd like to get a, have a motion to approve the March 10, 2015 Committee of the Whole and the March 10, 15 regular meeting. Moved. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes. One abstention. Two. Two abstentions. I'm sorry. The abstentions are Councilman Brown. Oh, that's right. That's right. See, I was gone. I for, forgot about that. Okay, two abstentions. Um, so uh, we've approved the minutes. Um, there is no announcement um, from the council president. Uh, is there a message from the county executive this evening? Thank you. Yes. Uh, just a few things. Uh, first, I want to uh, alert everybody um, that on April 1st, uh, at the, at the uh, Polaris Career uh, Center in Middleburg Heights, there will be a career fair uh, from 9 a.m. to noon. Uh, there will be about 100 businesses there. Uh, last year, I think there were something like 500 people that attended, and uh, something like 100 people ended up getting jobs. So if you want to... Uh, communicate that to your constituents. It might be something they would like to go to. Uh, so tell them to dress in business wear. Uh, they do do interviews sometimes right on the spot, and some people have gotten jobs right there. I also suggest that they bring a resume. So that's April 1st, 9 to noon, uh, in Middlebrook Heights at the Polaris uh, Center. Um, I also want to mention that uh, this week seems like it was uh, my Councilman Dave Greenspan week. I, uh, uh, Thursday night I was, uh, attended a, a town hall uh, that uh, Councilman Greenspan hosted in Fairview Park. I thought it went very well. We had maybe 50 people there, something like that. And uh, we talked together about the uh, priorities of our county. And um, uh, I would just mention that uh, if others of you have similar type events, I'd be happy to try to make time on, on schedule to do that with you. And then on Friday, we, uh, Councilman uh, Greenspan joined me at um, uh, Highland Software, uh, one of my 100 businesses in 100 days. Uh, and uh, again, we'll try to continue to extend those invitations to council members as we uh, visit businesses in your districts. Um, we met with folks uh, in the leadership there. It was, it's really one of the great technology success stories in the county. Um, I think their secret sauce that, that was revealed was just their, their, um, uh, their open, collaborative um, uh, environment that they foster, their culture that they have there. Uh, the only problem that we had was that uh, at the end I tried to get Councilman Greenspan to slide down their sliding board and he wouldn't do it. So. Uh, and then uh, uh, I might also mention uh, tonight is uh, Rick Werner's uh, last council meeting. 
Uh, Rick's been with the county for about 110 years, and yeah. uh, we'll, we'll miss him a lot. And Rick, um, I have a library book I need to return, so I'm going to give this to you afterwards um, and hope that you can take care of it. There are a few fines on it, however. I'm sorry about that. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much. Uh, legislation introduced by the council, a consideration of an ordinance of council for first reading and referral to committee. Ordinance number 2015-0008, an ordinance amending section 804.02 of the Cuyahoga County Code to incorporate changes to the Cuyahoga County College Savings Account Program, amending section 207.03A to incorporate changes in the powers and duties of the College Savings Account Program Committee, and declaring the necessity that this ordinance become immediately effective. And this will, of course, go to Education, Environment, and Sustainability Committee. Consideration of an ordinance of council for third reading adoption. Ordinance number 2015-0007, an ordinance amending section 208.01 of the Cuyahoga County Code to change the number of members serving on the Citizens Advisory Council on Equity from 15 to a range of 9 to 15. It's been, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? I know we've had it and discussed this in the past. Um, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? The um, ordinance is adopted. Legislation introduced by the executive. Consideration of a resolution for first reading adoption under suspension of rules. Could I have a motion to suspend Rule 9D and 12A? Mr. President, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to suspend the rules. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Rules have been suspended. Resolution number 2015-0056, a resolution amending the 2014-2015 biannual operating budget for 2015 by providing for additional fiscal appropriations from the general fund and other funding sources for appropriation transfers between budget accounts and for cash transfers between budgetary funds in order to meet the budgetary needs of various county departments, offices, and agencies, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. I'll move to adopt. Discussion? Mr. Chair, Mr. President. Um, before my colleagues is the letter, the memo that I um, compiled, the questions that were sent to the administration and their appropriate responses. There's one item I wish to make an amendment to this resolution. Uh, I make a motion to amend resolution 2015-0056 by deleting item R in section one. Um, just bear with me as I read this. Pursuant to resolution 2014-0253, the county is not authorized to sell its $10 million in bonds until the city contributes its $10 million in the cooperative agreement with the city and the group plan commission governing ownership and maintenance is finalized. We received a request to appropriate nearly $25 million for the construction of the new pedestrian and bicycle bridge. While we understand the county is st still intends to move forward with this project, there are still lingering questions that need to be answered, in particular, the legislation approving the sale of bonds to finance the county's contribution to the project is contingent upon, one, the receipt of the city's contribution, and two, the approval of the cooperative agreement specifying the maintenance and capital repair responsibilities for the bridge, as well as the sale of the naming rights. Furthermore, the county's decision to extend the construction timetable raises the additional question about the scope and timeline of the project. Accordingly, it would be premature for us to appropriate the full $25 million without some further clarity on the issue. And I urge my colleagues' support in amending the resolution to delete item R. I'll second the motion. Is there any discussion or questions? Uh, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? The amendment is adopted. All those in favor of the resolution on the merits as amended uh, say aye. 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 All those opposed? The resolution is adopted as amended. Consideration of resolutions for first reading and referral to committee. Resolution number 2015-0057, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment of W. Christopher Murray II upon his taking the oath of office as treasurer of Cuyahoga County and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Be referred to the committee of the whole. 
Resolution number 2015-0058, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment of Dennis G. Kennedy upon his taking the oath of office as fiscal officer of Cuyahoga County and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Committee of the Hall. Resolution number 2015-0059, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment of Mark D. Griffin upon his taking the oath of office as Inspector General of Cuyahoga County and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Resolution number 2015-0060, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment of Michael W. Dever upon his taking the oath of office as Cuyahoga County Director of Public Works and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Resolution number 2015-0061, a resolution authorizing a loan application to Ohio Environmental Protection Agency Water Pollution Control Loan Fund in the amount of $1,875,000 for a new sanitary sewer structure located in an Olmstead Township, authorizing the Director of Public Works on behalf of the County Executive to execute and submit said loan application, authorizing the County Executive to accept said loan if approved and to execute the agreement and all other documents in connection with said loan, authorizing the Director of Public Works to administer said project and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Public Works. Resolution number 2015-0062, a resolution making an award on requisition number 32769 to Perk Company Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $1,427,823.07 for rehabilitation and resurfacing of various bridge decks in various municipalities, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution, authorizing the county engineer on behalf of the county executive to make an application for allocation from county motor vehicle $7.50 license tax funds in said amount to fund said contract and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the projects as printed on the agenda items 6, 1 through 4. Public Works. Resolution number 2015-0063, a resolution authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1400-215 with AmeriCab Transportation Incorporated for transportation services for the period September 1, 2014 through August 31, 2016 for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $4,400,000 authorizing the county executive to execute the amendment and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Health and Human Services. Committee reports and consideration of resolutions for second reading adoption under suspension of rules. I'd like to have a motion to suspend the rules. Move to suspend the rules. Mr. Gallagher, yes. motion has been made and seconded to suspend the rules. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion is passed to suspend the rules. Resolution number 2015-0030, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment of Michael P. Foley upon his taking the oath of office as director of the Department of Sustainability and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Uh, motion's been made and seconded. Discussion. Councilman Sean. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, uh, Mr. Foley, uh, when he came before uh, the Committee of the Whole, stated that he wanted to create markets and grow green jobs. Government does not create markets. Disasters take place when government at the federal level tried to pick winners. All you have to do is walk through the history of the field of uh, Solyndra, $535 million lost. Fisker, $529 million. Abound Solar, $400 million. Evergreen Solar, $25 million. Total wise, $150 billion of our taxpayer money. In a blunt statement just released by the German economic uh, minister and chancellor, uh, Merkel's uh, vice chair at SME Solar, Germany's largest manufacturer of solar technology, stated that the German government announced that its transition 
to renewable energy is on the verge of an entire failure. The problem begins when we issue governments start picking winners and losers in the first place. Venture capitalists, firms are there to pick winners and losers for this very reason. They choose to invest in looking at companies, business models, and deciding what's worthy. When the government plays a role of the venture capitalist, it tends to reward companies that are connected to the policymakers themselves because it sounds nice to invest in green energy. Well, looking at Mr. Foley's background and the legislative uh, background says that he tried to also in influence the retail markets just recently. And regardless of whether you like or dislike shopping during the holidays, Mr. Foley's proposal to triple the pay requirements only on retailers, not in the restaurants that were open during the holidays, not in the gas stations, not in the hotels, not in the entertainment industry, but in a business he didn't like because the reality, and this is quoting from Mr. Foley, the reality is that I'm a liberal Democrat in a very conservative body and that this bill that would have government intrusion into the free market area. Mr. Foley also said these guys are, overboard, are, are, are way overboard and it's bringing commercialism to the hallow capitalism of this day and we're supposed to be retreating from all of that. Mr. Foley also early on decided that it was important for him to, to bring forth legislation in order to recall the governor because he didn't like where he was standing. I asked my colleagues to consider what is it that you want from this new department? I don't question Mr. Foley's passion other than where, whether his passion is where it's being directed to protect the taxpayer's dollars of this county. He stated in this, court, in this room his desire to create and grow markets. Based on the lack of success that's done with other taxpayers' dollars, ask yourselves, do you want this to be the example as we go forward? I ask you to support my belief this nomination for our first director of sustainability should not be somebody with a passion to create markets and start to spend our taxpayer dollars. Thank you. And Thank I'll be you. voting against his nomination. Thank you, Councilman Sean. I'm uh, fortunately one of the few people in council, probably not the only one, who uh, knows Mike Foley, um, has known Mike Foley for quite a while. He's a extremely capable person, uh, very, very bright, um, uh, and a very wonderful human being. Um, I think he's a very good fit for this um, for this new position, and I would uh, I would recommend his uh, approval. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. If I may, I, I too would recommend the approval of um, Mr. Foley to this position with his background and passion for the issue of creating um, opportunity um, combined with the opportunities we have to not only make and create jobs, but also to help combat what we see as a, a vital threat to security and the planet is global climate change. And science speaks to that um, clearly. And our resources are dwindling. Water is scarce, as we've seen in California. There's droughts. There's, they're, they, they're not going to have water. Our oceans are heating up unequivocally. It's time we harness this opportunity at the county level to be able to be the progressive voice in not only Northeast Ohio, but in the country. So I, I'm assured that we're going to um, really see progress here and opportunity um, with Mr. Foley leading this charge. In terms of government propping up and taking sides, we've seen it forever, and this is what's driven us to a place of scarcity when the government at the federal level um, funds agriculture, milk production, it determines big oil production. Our resources every day go there. So at, when we look to forward into something that's bountiful and sustainable, I think we should take that advantage here and be a leader, not a follower, and not looking backwards. So I'm excited. I hope my colleagues follow through. And we have Chanel Smith as well, who's going to be at the fore. Um, and I think with this team in place, we're, we're going to be proud.
and I, I hope my colleagues follow. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Councilman Miller. I also uh, recommend Mike Foley's nomination. Uh, when, when looking for a person, particularly to lead a new agency, you want somebody who's, who's not only experienced, but, he, he, uh, but has a passion for the, for, for the subject matter at hand and, and is, is enthusiastic about trying to, to bring about positive change. And, and I believe that, uh, that uh, Mr. Foley fits the bill in that regard. I, uh, I think that the, uh, the reservations that uh, Councilman Schwann said about creating markets, that, that we, uh, we have to keep these things in mind. And, uh, but I would just uh, remind everybody that the, uh, the, uh, the executive and the council are gonna, gonna participate uh, with the new director in making these kind of decisions and, and, and we're gonna have to uh, decide together on exactly what is gonna be the, uh, the appropriate role going forward. So uh, I think that uh, Mr. Foley will lead this department capably and I recommend this nomination. Thank you. Any further comments or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the nomination say aye. 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 All those opposed? Nay. And all those, one opposed. Thank you, Mr. Schron. Um, well, uh, congratulations, Mr. Foley. Thank you. And I understand we're going to uh, have the official swearing in here. Thank you. Mike, raise your right hand. Please repeat after me. I, Michael P. Foley. I, Michael P. Foley. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear that I will support. That I will support. Uphold. Uphold and defend the Constitution. And defend the Constitution of the United States. Of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Charter and Laws. And the Charter and Laws of the County of Cuyahoga, Ohio. Of, Cuy of the County of Cuyahoga, Ohio. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Honestly. Honestly. Diligently. Diligently. And impartially. And impartially. Perform and discharge. Perform and discharge. All the powers and duties. All the powers and duties. Incumbent upon me. Incumbent upon me. As director of sustainability. Of direct, as director of sustainability. In and for. In and for. The county of Cuyahoga. The county of Cuyahoga. State of Ohio. State of Ohio. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. And understanding. And understanding. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. <laughs> Resolution number 2015-0040, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment of George J. Taylor upon his taking the oath of office as Director of Public Safety and Justice Services and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Motion to adopt. Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt. All those on the, for any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution is adopted. Congratulations, Mr. Taylor. I, George J. Taylor. I, George J. Taylor. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support. That I will support. Uphold. Uphold. And defend. And defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. The Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Charter and Laws. And the Charters and Laws. Of the County of Cuyahoga, Ohio. Of the County of Cuyahoga, Ohio. That I will faithfully. 
That I will faithfully, honestly, honestly, diligently, diligently, and impartially, and impartially perform and discharge, perform and discharge all of the powers and duties, all of the powers and duties incumbent upon me, incumbent upon me as director of public safety and justice services, as director of public safety and justice services in and for, in and for the county of Cuyahoga, the county of Cuyahoga, state of Ohio, state of Ohio, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability and understanding, and understanding. So help me. God. God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Resolution number 2015-0041, a resolution authorizing a contract with Manatron Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $1,016,573 for annual maintenance and support services for the Manitron Visual Property Tax System and Sigma Camma Software System for the period January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2016, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Second. Then moved and seconded. Discussion? Mr. President. This is, a, this is a, a contract which extends the current maintenance provider. Uh, it um, provides us with an extension through the end of next year, and I urge my colleagues for the passage of this resolution. Discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0042, a resolution making an award on requisition number 27440 to MCPC Incorporated in the amount not to exceed $579,571.20 for wide area network monitoring services for the period February 1, 2015 through January 31, 2020, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. To adopt. Motion has been made and seconded, first and seconded. Discussion, Councilman Greenspan. Thank you, Mr. President. This is actually a, um, a, a good piece of legislation in a number of ways, but most importantly, uh, from my perspective, this county is saving uh, nearly, uh, look, Mr. Mowry, one and a half million dollars over the term of this contract. But even more impressively, the vendor selected is a vendor that's just down the street here in Cleveland. So whereas this contract was, was um, significantly more money and uh, the provider was outside of the region, uh, we're bringing it in closer to the county, within the county, and saving money. So with that, uh, I urge my colleagues for passage of this resolution. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0048, a resolution making an award on requisition number 32756 to the Triad Engineering and Contracting Company in the amount not to exceed $694,765 for replacement of Warrensville Center Road culvert number 05.13 in the City of Shaker Heights, authorizing the county executive to execute the contract and all other documents consistent with said award and this resolution, authorizing the county engineer on behalf of the county executive to make an application for allocation from county motor vehicle $7.50 license tax funds in the amount of $555,812 to fund said contract and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Moved to do it, Second. And moved and seconded. Discussion? Mr. Germana. Mr. Chairman, this uh, piece of legislation was heard in committee. Um, triad was the only bidder on, on this contract. Uh, and as explained, the, they have expertise in this particular uh, type of construction and do quite a bit of this same type of work for the uh, regional sewer. So um, they did come in under the estimate, and I recommend passage. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Resolution is adopted. 
Resolution number 2015-0051, a resolution authorizing an agreement with Cuyahoga County Treasurer's Office in the amount not to exceed $42,307.74 for child support services for the period January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015, authorizing the county executive to execute the agreement and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Okay. Made first and seconded. Mr. Councilman Jones. Mr. President, this contract allows the treasurer's office to accept and deposit cash payments related to child support cases. The contract amount is 66% reimbursable through the Federal Financial Participation Program. And I ask my colleagues support. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0052, a resolution authorizing agreements with various providers in the total amount not to exceed $7,587,891.68 for child support services for the period January 1, 2015 through December 31, 2015, authorizing the county executive to execute the agreements and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective for the providers and the amounts not to exceed is printed on the agenda items 7, 1 through 3. Move to adopt. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Councilman Jones. Mr. President, the, the contract allows these providers the ability to hold hearings regarding support enforcement and paternity establishment for child support cases. The contract amount is 66% reimbursable, again, through the Federal Financial Participation Program. And I urge my colleagues' support. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0053, a resolution authorizing an amendment to contract number CE-1300-099 with Lutheran Metropolitan Ministry for Emergency Shelter Services for Homeless Men located at 2100 Lakeside Avenue, Cleveland for the period January 1, 2013 through December 31, 2015 for additional funds in the amount not to exceed $1,701,638 authorizing the county executive to execute the amendment and all other documents consistent with this resolution and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Second. Resolution has been moved and seconded. Councilman Jones. And Mr. President, this shelter serves up to 400 homeless men a night and provides case management that links clients to services that include permanent housing, mental health, and alcohol drug treatment programs, and this uh, pro, uh, this is funded 100% by the Health and Human Services levy. And I ask for my colleagues' support. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed? Resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0054, a resolution confirming the county executive's reappointment of Joseph Gibbons to serve on the Cuyahoga Arts and Culture Board of Trustees for the term April 1, 2015 through March 31, 2018, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. Move to adopt. Second. Resolution has been moved and seconded. Councilman Conwell? Yes, um, President Brady. This uh, human res The Human Resources Appointment and Equity Committee asked for confirmation of Mr. Gibbons. He is committed to continuing his service. This is a reappointment. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. Resolution number 2015-0055, a resolution confirming the county executive's appointment or reappointment of various individuals to serve on the Cuyahoga Community College Board of Trustees for the term January 17, 2015 through January 16, 2020, and declaring the necessity that this resolution become immediately effective. There's appointment for Helen Forbes Fields and reappointment of Jerry L. Keshimer. Move to adopt. Resolution has been moved and seconded. Councilman Conwell. Councilman Brady, the Human Resources Appointment and Equity Committee asked for confirmation both of appointees and reappointment. Appointee is Ms. Forbes Fields, that it will be new to the Board of Trustees, and Mr. Jerry uh, Kelsheimer, that is a reappointment. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? Resolution is adopted. 
Um, <clears throat> miscellaneous committee reports. Um, wanna, I would, I would. No miscellaneous committee reports. Any, uh, so I, I guess I can start. The yeah. Education Environment Committee meeting is meeting tomorrow, um, <laughs> first at 11 o'clock. Tomorrow we're going to be discussing College Now scholarships and an update from the Sustainability Department. Um, Mr. Foley, our new director, on April 1, Right now it's scheduled at three, but it's up to the committee if we want to change that up. Um, but we're going to be discussing the kindergarten savings account in Mr. Um, um, Councilman Greenspan's legislation and an update from the administration on that. What time was that, Councilman? Right now it's at three. Um, but if people on the committee want to move that time, we'll discuss it between now and then. We'll let you know. Any other any reports at this side on this end? Mr. Chairman. The, the Health and Human Services Committee will meet at April 1st to deal with the items referred today. Um, the time is typically 1 o'clock, but I'd like to reserve and talk to the committee about possibly moving it back one hour. Just for that, that day? Just for that day. Okay. Could we discuss that? Um, okay. okay. Thank that was, you. That was very last minute. Um, Councilman Carlo. Um, nothing on the agenda for the Human Resources Appointment and Equity Committee, but just to keep the committee members updated, we had potentially thought April 21st would be uh, the pay equity uh, consultants are presented to us, but that is the only day um, that they are unable to um, get a plane ride up here. So it will be moved possibly back to May, and I will keep you all informed of that. Thank you very much. Uh, Safety and Justice Affairs, Tuesday, the 31st, uh, 1 o'clock. Mr. Chairman, the um, Public Works Committee will be meeting at 10 o'clock on April 1st to discuss the two pieces referred and to the previous piece of business that uh, we have, hadn't heard in committee yet. Uh, the Operations and Intergovernmental Committee We'll meet on our regular time slot on Tuesday the 31st at 3 p.m. We have uh, legislation being carried over that hopefully we're going to be in a position to resolve and move forward at this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Anything? Okay. Um, I've got a little um, under miscellaneous business. I um, want to kind of remind people we've got a lot going on here. Um, there is a there is sunshine laws and public records training that will be held this Thursday, March the 26th, from 1 to 4:15 in the council chambers. Uh, all, new members are particularly uh, encouraged to attend, and the training will be presented by the Ohio Attorney General's office. Um, a committee of the whole meeting has been scheduled for Thursday, April the 9th, at 2 p.m. Uh, for the following, an update by Jeff Applebaum regarding the Convention Center Hotel project and the confirmation hearings for the executive's nomination of Chris Murray to serve as county treasurer. A committee of the whole meeting has also been scheduled for Tuesday, April the 14th at 2 p.m. for the confirmation hearing for the executive's nomination of Dennis Kennedy to serve as fiscal officer and the confirmation hearing for the nomination of Mark Griffin to serve as inspector general. Um, we have several confirmation hearings uh, out in front of us hit this spring, and uh, we will be in, in touch with you. They include, of course, um, uh, Michael Dever for Director of Public Works and uh, Robert Triazzi for, for Law Director. Also on a lighter side, um, the council is uh, selling raffle tickets for the Harvest for Hunger uh, this year, and uh, if you want to buy a raffle ticket, uh, there's lots of great prizes, and you can get one from Tiffany in the back. And that's all I have under miscellaneous business. Is there any public comment unrelated to the agenda? Yes, Mr. President, there is. Mr. Peary? No, unrelated.
council president, <laughs> vice president, and council members. My name is Satinder Kore. I'm a community activist, a volunteer teacher, a retired structural engineer, and a resident of Cleveland's West Side. This is my fifth opportunity to speak before you. The subject of my comments is 218-year-old public square destroyed. Welcome Jimmy DeMora Square, a product of Cleveland's corrupt system, a totally bogus project. At present, in addition to opposing the Lakefront Pedestrian and Bicycle Bridge, also known as the Jimmy DeMora Bridge, I'm actively opposing the public square project, also known as the Jimmy DeMora Square. So far, there have been over 260 hours of demonstrations, mostly in public square, with my Leave Public Square Alone signs, and now the Welcome Jimmy, Jimmy DeMora Square signs, which have been very nicely received by the public. There was a 10-day-long hunger strike to protest corruption in the public square project, the fight to combat a corrupt city hall, Cuyahoga County, and business establishment, and a compliant and corrupt media is not an easy one. The media has virtually ignored the eight-month-old public square campaign that started in August 2014. A corrupt process was used in the development of the radical makeover of public square. Mass deception was used to promote the project. Mayor Jackson never responded to request for a one-week-long traffic test and citywide public meetings, issues dealing with public safety and an environmental impact statement. For the record, Mayor Jackson never responded to any of the multiple emails sent since August 24, 2014, or the two certified letters. Stephen Litt, art and architectural critic of The Plain Dealer, reported in his article of February 24, 2015, that there was a meeting at the Old Stone Church, right out at Public Square, on February 23, 2015, of downtown residents and representatives from the contractor and city hall to discuss the noise and vibrations from the construction of Public Square. Well, I wrote an email to the senior pastor seeking his help to obtain an EIS. Who could be a better person? No response. I wrote another email. No response. Well, I then finally sent a certified letter just a few feet across from the post office from Stone Church and received a confirmation that the letter had been received. Still, no response. The senior pastor happens to live in the park building overlooking Public Square. He has described the new design as awesome, the one that shows you just one bus. Still waiting for the EIS, no reply from the mayor. Mr. Senior, Bear, could you wrap it up, please? Yes. Senior pastor of the Old Stone Church, County Executive Budish, and Cuyahoga County Council. Thank you very much. Okay, Good thank to see you. you again. Uh, Mr. Chair, the there's one more person who's requested to speak. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me, I Mr. didn't realize Maurice that. Mr. Maurice Rhodes. Mr. Rhodes, welcome. Good evening. How are you, Mr. Brady? I'm all right. Good. You were city councilman. Um, I see a lot of old friends here, Democrats. Uh, the Jim DeMora uh, brought to power. They owe him favors. Uh, they uh, benefited from his corruption, even the mom Buddhist. Uh, so I stand in support of him. Even uh, Mr. Robert Triazzi benefited from uh, uh, this sorry, corrupt county government. Number one, their item of business is uh, Rick Warner. Um, he's discriminating against me. I've uh, been calling Rick Warner uh, since, uh, what, January, saying I need homeless services because I battled Jim DeMore in the corrupt council, uh, uh, corrupt uh, county government. And for that, I had to uh, uh, leave and go to Los Angeles because Robert Triazzi uh, evicted me or helped evict me. Um, City of Cleveland Gate Building and Housing Code violations, structural damage, and Robert Triazzi and uh, the woman he had assigned to housing court with Crooked Ray Pianca, uh, he stabbed me in the back. Anybody who has uh, safety issues, building housing code violations, who has uh, public health department violations, gets to leave this crooked landlord. But like Nina Turner, I was allowed, I was made to live in human feces. 
and then I was evicted, so now I'm homeless. I don't have my brand new uh, flat screen. I don't have, I'm, I'm out of money. We talking about thousands of dollars here. This is what Robert Trazzi has done to me. That's why I stand to support this gentleman. And I saw uh, Mr. Buddha smiling and stuff in contempt as if this man wasn't speaking the truth. Now, nah, I'm going to deal with Rick Warner. He was here with Cricket Jim Demora. As uh, Armand Buddhist has kept all the Cricket Jim Demora's staff, uh, the apparatus is still here. But yet you tell me you're not corrupt. Um, I want homeless services. I want my money. I want my, my, my couch. I want my brand new silverware. I want uh, uh, Ray Pianka's libel to slander me. Now I can't rent a place because uh, they say I'm evicted. Ray Pianka said I wrongfully deposited my money with the housing court, with the clerk of courts, Earl Turner, Honorable Earl Turner. How can I do that when he has to sign an order granting me the legal right to do so? I see uh, Bill Denahan. I see uh, all the Democratic friends here, uh, my Buddhist from uh, the House, uh, Dale Miller from the from uh Cleveland City House Council from uh, Ohio House. Thank you very much, sir. I move to adjourn this county council meeting. Do I have a second? All those in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>